It's J Moore, the very best reviews. Tell them none can contest. We gon' What's good, everybody? Welcome to the show, fam. Here to talk about that BMF season three, episode three. My first reaction. Man, last night it was big storms over here at my place. And uh, the internet was out. This is the first time I kind of experienced that. But, you know, I'm in a new location. I had to move and make different things happen. So, hey, I guess that's one of the things I may have to deal with when it's storming real bad. Um, that wasn't something I had a problem with at my last spot. But anyway, life go on. I'll figure it out. I guess I have to make some adjustments or something. But I am back. And, uh, man. I'm going to tell y'all, it's it was hard for me to get up today for this. I've been busy making runs and stuff since I feel like the crack of dawn. So anyway, I had to come through, though, make sure that I got this first reaction out because that episode for season three, episode three, was I liked it. It was a good episode. And uh, also, uh, I know most people know about the news that Book two, season four will be its final season. And I got a lot of information about that as well. Um, I need to do another video about that. I did share with some people in Discord, uh, some of the members, that it is budget cuts in the industry and that uh, they were making some changes and things. So I didn't know this. I didn't say that. But uh, I, I'm not as surprised because the budget cuts and things, it affected some stuff that I saw. So anyway, all of you guys that love Book 2 Ghosts, I know you're kind of sad for that news that this may be the last one. And uh, I'm sad as well because, man, I've been talking about this power universe and all this stuff 50 Cent been doing for like seven years now so or longer uh so hey man it is kind of bittersweet as well uh to week the end of to week <laughs> all right what's up my man ill woods first in the building my brother how you been doing shout out to my man ill woods man he been going through some stuff health wise and uh i just want to say man shout out to you man stay strong my brother and, uh, you know, everybody, we all may go through some stuff. So the best thing to do is to stay strong, keep it moving, keep your mind working on other things and occupied on stuff and take it one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? Could have taken it one day at a time. That's all we can do. My girl B, what's up, B? How you doing? Appreciate y'all for coming through. Vonnie Love, what's up? What's up, man? Good evening to you. How you feeling? Tynette, you know I'm. I was I was uh, struggling with the internet last night, and then boy, it was hard today. But uh, I I had so much going on, but I barely made. It. I pulled out like two hour nap before <laughs> before I got started tonight. So I'm glad that uh you know you was wondering about me, but here I am. There I go. There I go. <laughs> Vonnie Love, you had a bad storm there too. Well, I was in, I'm in Indianapolis. So if you in the Midwest area, you probably got hit by the same storm that I got hit with. Suburbia Jones, what's up? You say Team Chuck in the building. Hey, Chuck down the what? <laughs> hey, Chuck was on deck like, boy, I'm ready to see this party. This is a family affair. He like, Pops, don't you see the vibe done change? Yeah, it is a little different. <laughs> Damien Kenny, what's up? Dame Dollar, appreciate you, brother, for coming through. Andre Adekunle. Let me know if I got that right. Andre Adekunle. Checking in on Facebook. What's up, Andre? Dr. Dre. Speaking of Dr. Dre, he had said that he had three strokes recently when he had his health scare so shout out to dr dre you say i can't believe power book two is being canceled yeah it is 
it is kind of bittersweet and surprising because it's been on for so long. We sometimes feel like this stuff will go forever. And book four could have went on a few more seasons if they wanted to with Tariq being so young. But I guess they realize, uh, oh, part of it is they feel that these black shows may be devaluing the network uh, to a certain extent, which I know a lot of people I know will probably say that these shows are what made the network popular. But maybe that's only in this community it made that network popular. Maybe the majority of community was saying, hey, I'm tired of all these black shows. What is this? <laughs> Put on some Outlander. <laughs> Demarcus Vaughn, what's up? What's up? Mom Dukes in the building. What's up? What's up on Facebook? Vonnie Love, you in Indianapolis too? See, Vonnie Love, you know I ain't lying. It was thunder and bad, wasn't it? It was messed up last night. So, hey, Vonnie Love, my witness, y'all. My internet was messed up. It really was bad here in Naptown. They call it Naptown because they don't wake up over here. They be asleep all the time anyway. So, nah, I'm playing. <laughs> Yeah, Tonette, I left Chicago. I'm in Indianapolis. Yeah. Got to get somewhere where I can afford it. <laughs> I'm going, I'm broke. I need more views and subscribers, y'all. I'm Paul. Do you want to ride with me? I'm a Paul P-I-M-P. <laughs> Demarcus J. Who more iconic? Tupac or Big Meech? Now, that right there, and I know why you ask him, because they kind of had a reference in this episode of Meech meeting Tupac. At first, I thought they was going to try to play it like, yeah, that's Pac, but they didn't say it. But no, then they had him talking in third person. Pac, man, Pac be out here like that. People love Pac, but Pac love the people. Pac be out here like, hey, Pac ready to rap. They say, Pac, you ready to rap? Pac ready to rap. Pac don't care. Pop smoke. Yeah, not pop smoke. Pop smoke. <laughs> Bonnie Love, straight from the GI to Naptown. Hey, so you close like me from Chicago to Naptown. I got the let look at that, man. See, getting hooked on phonics at a young age really does work. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dre. All right, let's see. Hey, D. Renee, how you doing? Good to see you. Appreciate you coming through. Yolanda, Edney, how you doing, Miss Yolanda? You say, hey, Jay Moore, I've been missing your live. I'm actually watching the first reaction, but I wanted to say hello to brother. I appreciate it, my sister, and I'm glad that you were able to catch me and say hello, and I appreciate it, and I definitely am happy that you enjoy the lives. All right. I'm getting ready to go ahead and break down this episode. I always like to, you know, in the first few minutes, 10 minutes or so, give a little update and a shout out to people and things. Um, Coy Don, you say, bro, Power Book 4, Power Book Season 4 is the last season. Yeah, that's 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 going to be kind of bittersweet for a lot of people. So here's the thing. Will Tariq live or die? I think he should die. <laughs> Tariq should die in this show. He should not live. All these little plans and running around the city on the bus and all of that. Well, he got a car now, but he should die. He should not survive. Monet should die. Everybody, <laughs> all of the Tejadas should die except for Diana. And uh, Method Man could live. And uh, Effie can live. The girls can live. All the dudes can die. In the story. I just saved y'all 10 episodes. You know, I just saved you 10 episodes in the story. Dame Dollop, do or die straight from the shot. Got that Cadillac, boy. <laughs> Willie Hatfield, what's up, what's up? How you feeling? Athletic mind, old girl with the gold teeth, can't act for. Boy, Miles Davis. Miles Davis seems so over the top with that damn sword. I told you go over there and put them lips 
on between them hips for my cousin. See that? I did it like she was smoking some a joint. <laughs> hey, Miles Davis ain't, ain't one of my favorite characters, but it's another character that uh that every time this character's on the screen, I'd be thinking, whoa, this jumps off the screen to me. And it is the cousin of Meech, the girl cousin. It seemed like she's reading a script when she talks to me. Worse than Miles Davis. But I ain't trying to critique her like that. But it does seem a little. She does. She seem like uh, the one that jumps off the screen to me a little more. Athletic Mind Power Book Two is ass. The last realistic show out of all of them is what? <laughs> What's the last realistic show out of all of them? I know you ain't saying Power Book 2. You just said it was ass. Sean Tor, what up? You say, what up, brother? Glad you're feeling better. I'm so shocked about the cancellation of Power Book 2. Go. I'm shocked of how it seems kind of soon. And uh, it does seem like it could have been more left on the bone. I thought they had better ratings and that more success. I don't really, uh, be honest with you all, I don't really know or understand deeply the financials of a cable show i do know that these 10 episode shows can be uh having more difficulty than shows with 20 episodes or so like uh the walking dead because the budget and the writers and all the stuff with 10 episodes and contracts and different stuff it just can be a little more complicated and they don't have a lot of time to write or develop a story and things. And then each season you got to give people a raise. Well, not everybody, but some people contract is up each season and, and those move faster because it's only 10 episodes. Whereas like walking dead is like 22 episodes in one season. That's two seasons of power. So that could have been two pay raises for people versus one pay raise. There's a lot of stuff, but again, like I say, I don't want to pretend like I know all the financials of how they make a profit or not, but I do know Lionsgate bought stars. They own stars. And I think in the UK it's called like MGM, not MGM plus Lionsgate plus or something like that that plays this anyway they for a small summing up the story from what i read and different things um that they think it's too many of these type of shows and it's not getting the the money or ratings that they would like and it's getting expensive to make and so hey i guess that's that's what happens in the business unfortunately so you know, B, you say bring book two to Chicago, merge with Tommy, make it a force to be reckoned with. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, that would be dope. And hey, make him have to leave New York, and <laughs> come to the shop. It did seem that maybe it may be reversed and maybe Tommy may leave the shy and go to New York. But who knows? Maybe not. Big Willie, you say, why not Diana? I don't think she's done enough to deserve to die. She could possibly go to jail or go broke. But offhand, I don't remember Diana killing people. Did she kill some people in this last season? I don't think so. So if you ain't a killer... I don't think she should deserve to die as well. So, Ned, I'm not feeling Henrietta either. She is doing too much. 2 Chain can't act either. 2 Chain, he didn't do that good this episode. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't show that well for him this episode. Because when he got robbed 
And then when he was mad at me and said he about to leave, and then all his boys was like, man, you ain't never pawned nothing for us. Uh, I would say that he didn't look the best in that spot right there. Now, I don't know, man. The, the acting is so weird because you don't know how you look, kind of. And then you kind of see that. I, I don't know. But that that definitely... He definitely didn't look the best this episode. I thought he, he, when he got robbed, I'm like, what? And then when he was dissing, he was mad. I'm like, what? And and then it, I think it's part of what is they have for his character. So Two Chain's character, yeah, he kind of had an eye raised on Meech the whole time. But just the same last episode, I thought Two Chain's character was happy with what was going on with Meech. And then, because he get robbed, he mad at Meech. I ain't get that. You see, I drink that magical water. Look. It disappears. It's Wonder Woman water. No, it's a blue bottle. <laughs> blue green. Uh, yeah, uh, Tonette, Raisin Cane and the best spinoff, but the original power is the best in your opinion. I definitely agree, at least the first few seasons, and then Raisin Cane is the best. You're right. Definitely. 8 a.m. in Charlotte. I like High Town way better than book two. I like, I like High Town, although I haven't really watched enough of it. Um, but it is interesting. It feels like a lot of the rest of the power shows, though. But it's not. Damien Kitty, Diana and Drew set their mom up to be ended. Effie tried to end Lauren. Why did they get to stay? Because they didn't succeed. Lauren didn't get killed, and they didn't kill uh what you call it, they mama. So that's why I would say they get a pass. Now, had they succeeded in their plans, both of them, then it's over for both of them, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, I don't believe in the eye for an eye necessarily, but I think that if you in the dope game and you killing, then, you know, you reap what you sow. But if they were to get arrested for these crimes, I wouldn't say they should get the death penalty because I don't believe in the death penalty. I don't agree with it. I think if it was a death penalty, it should be like karma. <laughs> you out in these streets, you've been doing this so much, and then it's only so right that somebody end up coming back for you. But, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it the same way. Damien Kenny say the power ladies got Jake nose open. I ain't gonna lie, they do. They do. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna front. But that ain't why I ain't gonna say they should die. I said Monet should die. She deserved her death. She's earned it. I don't think they've earned the death. They've earned bad outcomes like jail or broke or something like that. But I don't think they earned the, the end of the, their finale. Tariq, he's earned his finale <laughs> after what he did to his pops. So, what's up, Rashonda? How you doing, sis? One Journey, how you doing? Good to see you. You say H-Town full of gangster junkie, high town full of gangster junkies, no human elevation. Mm. I've only seen about three episodes of High Town. I saw Frankie Cuevas get popped, and I think I saw like the first two episodes. <laughs> So I really don't really know a lot, but those three episodes were good. Speaking of good, this episode I liked a little bit. Uh, well, not a little bit. I liked it a lot. And uh, we see Lucille, woo, Doctor Doctor Feelgood cut a ten thousand dollar check. I want to do what I can for the church. You know what I'm saying? Donations. I got another little thing throwing. Your donation basket, you know what I'm saying? I put something in that donation basket. 
I should have never let that donation basket get away. Nope, sure shouldn't have. Charles don't know what to put in there. He only put in change. I'm about to put some stuff that fold. Yeah, it's so much. It fold. It's big. It fold in half. I'm going to put that in there. Yeah. Come come get this check up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come get this check up. Literally, this check up and this check up. I got a thermometer for you. <laughs> Come take this temperature, baby. Come take this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You still running real warm. As a matter of fact, you hot, baby. Yeah, you real hot. Ooh, I got the fever. You ain't got the, I got the fever. <laughs> so Ned said, for the first time, I felt sorry for Charles. That's because you know it's over. It's a wrap, huh? You know it's like, uh, the writing on the wall and on that check. The writing on the wall and on the check, Charlie. You ain't know. You thought you coming back with some old, baby, I had a good time. I was dancing. I did. It's a family affair. You're like, man, get your ass out of here, Charles. <laughs> Charles, like, you know what, Meech? Since my name on that house, I'm about to come move in. Bruiser got some allies. <laughs> Bruiser. Bruiser got some allies. Yeah. He got the lip and he got the tongue. <laughs> hey, I love that part when he said Bruiser got Kev like, man, shut up, Bruiser. You suck. I got beat up. I'm like, hey, hey, Bruiser got some allies. Oh man, that made me laugh so hard when I heard that part. <laughs> and then he looked up like, "Yeah, cause you need help, Dad." Anyway, this episode was good. I liked it. We saw that Meech is trying to make them moves in Atlanta. I think that this girl Angel might be his baby mama to be his new baby mama or something. I don't know, but we uh, see that he go to network at this little convention jack the rapper and it made a lot more sense why he was there now because he was already in atlanta and networking and you already there and the functions and stuff so it was just natural to go there you ain't like he working a nine to five and while they're there networking and stuff to do business they come across one of the miami killers and they didn't know it, but at the same time, Pops was down there to visit, and Pops ended up at that show, which he didn't want him to be, and Pops like, I'm grown, man, I can do what I want to do, but sometimes, you know, you got to read the room, and that's what he was trying to tell him, like, Pops, read the room, the vibe done changed, man, you in the position to, you know, get get into some trouble, pretty much, which, you know, he was sitting there conversating with dude, <laughs> talking about the damn record deal, uh, and not realizing you you conversating with the enemy. You you might have some stuff get get in trouble up in here. So Nat, you say Charles was fighting gangster, helping me. She was, and uh, I only seen this episode once. Still, I had so much going on today, I didn't get to see it again. But. I could have swore I saw Charles on the floor. Did they jump Charles? <laughs> and then what? Meech helped him. And next thing you know, Charles was throwing down. Because at first I was like, oh, snap. They beating Charles down. But then next thing you know, I saw Charles whooping that. <laughs> Whoop that trick. What? Whoop that trick. And I was like, okay, okay. Look at Charles. He didn't want to get that house at first. But then, you know, Meech had to let him know after that fight and different things. And then, uh, wait, what made Charles, he, it wasn't the fight. It was something about the, I think it was the girl or something. Charles at first wasn't going to sign the papers, which, you know, he like, hey, you know, you about to have me complicit in some of your crimes. And, he, you know, Meech had it that he was an engineer and had all this money or whatever on the paperwork. And for those that may have thought, oh, that ain't accurate, it wasn't as stringent. 
uh, for some rules to get a house um, as it is today, especially if you was paying cash. B, you say Charles better go back to the East Bay Motel with a thought neighbor because Dr. Feelgood about to have her wide open. You ain't lying. You ain't lying, boy. Yeah, it, it, Lucille is, is definitely done. Damien Kenny, Lucille don't even know Doc. She could just be another notch on his stethoscope. <laughs> she need to be careful. That is true. He could be like, I always needed that on my little stethoscope. All right, I'm done. Go take your ass back to Wendy's. Take your ass back to SeaWorld. <laughs> One journey. I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. How about yourself? Neek XO, what's up, sis? How you feeling, girl? So, Net, no, Charles was standing in business. Oh, okay. All right. I thought he had hit the ground for a second and they was on him. Uh, but, yeah, I did see him throwing them things, though. Yeah, Lucille, she definitely, it's in her mind already that she about to get with the doctor because she told her girlfriend at the at, where, at the church or whatever all about him. And you know what that made me think of when, uh, when I saw that? And then what happened with Charles and everything is uh, when a woman fed up. Hey, <laughs> you go sleep on the couch. Like the late great, once great song singer songwriter once said, "When a woman fed up, she ain't working at no Wendy's. She gonna run your ass out." <laughs> oh, straight up, yeah, it's it's it ain't looking too good for Charlie Brown over there. So another thing that I liked about this episode is that we see Terry is not the same manager as Meech. He don't have the same managerial style. He want to do this highway or my way, boss up stuff. And he realizes it don't necessarily work that way. He need to be a little smoother. And he created some beefs and things that ain't necessary. Like at the end of the episode, when he told Detective Lip, the bruiser, you know, either get on board or get ran over. He like, I choose to get ran over. I already got my speed bump out. Run it. Run it over. You run over this speed bump. You gonna tear up your, your muffler, your transmission, all that cool head. Run it. <laughs> So, I think he needs to take some pointers from Meech on how to be a little more diplomatic because it seems like we're, we're seeing the development of why Terry left Detroit. He said he wanted to stay. He wanted to make things happen for his people, but it seems that things is getting out of control and he creating more enemies than allies with Miles Davis on that ass with the sword. You got the, the speed bump ready for you. Detective Lip Bruiser got your mad ass. <laughs> Terry is running the show. And we see in this episode that Henrietta now got Bruiser working for her. And one of the things that he come up with is, hey, police don't search certain type of vehicles. So when they get ready to make this move, uh, they use an ambulance. Now, Terry and the crew, they trying to hit Henrietta and hit, take the stash. So that way, the customers have no choice but to come to him for his work, which is kind of dirty. But at the same time, it's really about business. They ain't really trying to hit him for the product necessarily, but they got to take it off the street so people want to come to them. The only problem was they had Bruiser running shotgun in the ambulance so when they came and and you know tried to take the drop on the ambulance that they was going to jack bryant was in there and he ended up shooting back hitting one of their people who executed one of them but at the same time we saw detective chin and her partner she over here talking about i'm gonna pop your cherry in the shootout <laughs> fork 
what you talking about popping cherries like you gung ho Rambo up in here? Got your ass shot, and she saw Brian was there with him, and then executed him. Damn, I thought for a second Brian was gonna take out his partner, Detective Chin. How many people thought Brian was gonna walk over and and end her for being there and seeing him? You could put a a, a C for Chin one. C1, if you think that Chin was about to eat a bullet right then and there, I definitely thought it was over for Chin. She saw Brian riding in the ambulance with the dope boys. He didn't murder the damn suspect in cold blood. I thought it was a wrap for her. We didn't even see what happened to her partner. Did her partner get shot? Because I don't know where the hell she was at. So, anyway, we see that Brian Somehow, I guess maybe she didn't tell. He he, you know, was able to end in that little attack. And at the same time, I guess keep his cover because I doubt she's gonna snitch, but I think Bryant, you know, will have to do something to answer for something somehow, some way, uh, uh about what happened. And he did do something real dirty. I'm surprised he didn't say nothing to Terry about it when Terry was talking crazy to him. But uh, they had the CPS called on Terry Jr. and Lawanda. That was dirty right there. Uh, and old girl was there straight to put put take Shorty away. Like, uh, is this smoking? Does he have asthma? Is there a pet? Oh, she's just trying to just write and make up anything. Like, what? I mean, that's the thing, I guess, with no cameras and no technology back in the day. Um, it could just make things like that more difficult because then it's more difficult to prove and another thing. So, um, but back then, hey, you get a CPS case and they got you going through the system and all kind of stuff. That could just be a nightmare. Now, I don't know if this may be the case or not, especially back then. It probably could have been. But one thing that could help Terry want to leave Detroit is this case. And if he and LaWanda decide to move and go to another city, he probably can avoid all this, this CPS drama or whatever child protective service stuff that's going on. So he may be able to... Uh, get away from that if he moved, which could be one more reason why he gonna leave Detroit. So we'll see. I definitely believe that Bryant is the one that did that, though. Uh, reported that. For sure. So we'll see. This uh, episode, man, Meech, he making the connections. He found out also some things behind the scenes. For example, Neo Ain't about the right. <laughs> Neo then got that ass whooped. All right. And he was <laughs> Goldie. They didn't whoop Goldie. He said, You don't even deserve to clean my money. Angel listening to Goldie and setting him up. And then it's just crazy mind control how it works, man. It's just really. That's really something that's fascinating to me. I don't know why I don't try to control minds and stuff like that and do that. I just never understood how people can be manipulated and controlled. And where I'm going with that is when he was in the car, he talking about, you know, you ain't shit without me, right? Say it. Say it. I ain't without you. Like, What? I don't know. I, I'm very fortunate, I guess, in life to have a strong mind. And I've been tricked and manipulated by people, but I've never been a follower and where I felt like this person word I got to do and listen to. I, I just don't get that. And It'd be some smart people or beautiful people that fall for the craziest stuff. This girl can go and do anything and shoot, go work and strip, do whatever. 
I mean, I can't say anything. We don't know how smart she is. But anyway, she definitely better than what he made her say, that she ain't nothing without him. What? So that really is just crazy to me. That's just wild how people can fall into those type of situations in life, man. So, you know, <laughs> will she betray Meech? Because when somebody is psychologically uh, abused, and that somebody is pretty much like uh, Goldie, he got like, he living rent free up in her head. <laughs> he got a mansion and a yacht in that mug. Uh, it's hard to overcome that. We'll see what happens. But I think either she could be good for me or the worst thing that he could do is mess with that girl. Um, so we'll see. He creating a lot of enemies in Atlanta too. And that ain't good. So, but you know, they already told him going up north for some snow. <laughs> so they looking for Remy Reigns, but they ain't Remy Ransom, but they ain't found him yet. Uh, but at the same time, they still moving and grooving, making their moves. And Meach, he got his new crib, base of operations. It seemed like everything was working out pretty good for him. Um, and I believe that we'll probably see Charles come back to Atlanta soon and stay. Um, one thing that was part of the story is the dad did eventually come down there and get involved in what they was doing. Now, I don't want to get into what levels of involvement he was in or not. And by the way that the show is going, who knows what they may say, change, edit, update, or whatever to make the show more interesting. But Charles, I think, is going to realize, hey, my life here in Detroit, it really is in shambles. And it's best to go on down here and start over. He's still young, just in his 40s. And he can have a lot of fun <laughs> down in the eight. So we'll see what happened with that. Um, but uh, I definitely think that uh, he he gone with that one. Um, Damian Kenny, you say stripper shawty is a youngin. Y'all heard what she said Goldie was doing for her. She think he's the only person she can trust. Meech is a new dude. That is true. That is true. She said that, uh, you know, she didn't have anything and she got off the bus and he gave her a place to stay and this, that, and the other. So, you know, in that sense, she does probably feel that way, that he's the only one that was there for her or that she can trust. And, you know, Meech coming with that game right there. So, I don't know. I think that uh, she eventually is going to be able to warm up to Meech. Meech did look at things differently because he said, hey, if we get in good with the strippers, that's the key because they know everybody. That's the plug. And that's an angle nobody was thinking about. And, hey, that's the thing in life. It's all about thinking of something that nobody else was thinking about and then capitalizing on it. So Meech definitely is still working on that. And, and his mindset and way that he network and and make moves is on a totally different level than Terry. And we saw that Terry still stuck with these women. Uh, <laughs> we saw that Lala, she was over there talking about some, you know, I ain't wearing no panties. She misses you. Purring. Brrr, Catwoman purr. <laughs> he like, oh, yeah, well, I got to go click. She like, oh. He going to turn down this pussy. You are going to turn down this pussy. You gay. You gay. He gay. That man gay. You gay. <laughs> hey, that brought her to tears turning down them goodies. Don't nobody turn down these goodies. What? But then we see later she was at that new apartment, though, wasn't she? Hey. It's over. Greeny, I said Goldie. Thanks. What's that? Kev? Kevy Kev. He said it's Greeny, not Goldie. There we go. 
Greeny don't go, he gonna have a shiner. He gonna have a blackie around that eye. Keep it up. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Athletic mind. Meach need to get back with Hakeem. Lion baby mama. Hey. Definitely. And uh, he should, uh, I don't know, man, what, what happened with his baby mama in Detroit. I guess he just left her behind. He swear he always looking out for folks, but again, maybe not. I mean, they can't. It's only an hour show. They they can only show but so much. So who knows? Maybe he been sending her a little something every now and then. I don't know. Meach does seem to remember people, but can't remember everybody. I guess we'll see. All right, I'm about to go ahead and break down my rating for this episode. And uh, if anybody got any questions or comments, let me know and uh, i get to them. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this Mosco. All right, all right. The Mosco is my rating system i use real simple four categories and with the four categories you got uh visuals and the storyline and special effects and, and entertainment real simple 25 points each try to be you know even and fair so with this episode the visuals and cinematography they always have this as looking like an older show on purpose, which I like. It looks good, good show. And um, this was pretty good uh, as far as we saw when they were at the fight and, and Jack the Rapper and different stuff, you know, a couple different angles. But at the most part, this didn't have nothing groundbreaking or unique that comes to mind. So I'm going to give it a 20 out of 25 uh Storyline and plot, I did like that. I like a lot of this 90s TV show stuff, so I guess I'm a sucker for that, but it does got to be done right. The Jack the Rapper event, I remember wanting to go to that when it was happening, never got a chance to. It seemed like it would have been crazy anyway, so I'm glad maybe, or I don't know. Anyway, uh, it had a lot of good things with Lucille getting ready to deal with the doc. And uh, we see a lot of different things with the story uh, growing. I'm going to give it a 20 um, out of 25. And I enjoyed this uh, episode story. Special effects, makeup, costumes. Uh, not a big special effects show. Uh, although the costumes was on point with what people were wearing in the time period and those birthday suits at uh, Platinum Palace, okay? Them birthday suit costumes definitely would look good, all right? Uh, so I'm going to give it a 20 as well for the special effects, makeup, and costumes. And then entertaining, fun factor, it was entertaining show. Um, I would give it another 20 which would bring this episode to uh, 80 on the Moscow. And uh, those familiar with the show, you know that I always, you can drop off that zero and that will be an eight out of 10. I always give a 0.5 margin. Uh, so if you think it was a seven and a half or an eight and a half, I could see where you would come with that. Um, and I thought that that would be about average for this episode. This is a B, uh, a B episode, and uh, that's pretty good. I, I like how the story kept going, and uh, we'll see how the rest of it progress. Um, athletic mind, you say Meech needs to get back with Hakeem, Lion Baby Mom. I already read that, I think. <laughs> uh, Kevin Kev, you said Greeny is the right name for him. Jealous. You ain't lying. I'm glad they caught him up, caught up with him and beat him down, especially after she was he was making her say that she ain't nothing without him. Well, the dude that you thought ain't nothing without you ain't nothing without just got whooped. So how great could he be? Damien Kitty be Mickey could be with Meach BM. 
They both could be lonely. Ooh, now that right there, you talking about war. <laughs> Wait a minute. You going to be with my baby mom? <laughs> no, nah, that wouldn't fly right there, dude. Dude be Mickey, but it crossed some major lines with that one. So we'll see. Kevin Kev, the dialogue for the show could be better. I can see where you come with that. Uh, it is kind of basic. The only person that kind of talks smooth or says things interesting is Meech <laughs> everybody else. But then again, this is a show of basic people that pulled off some very uh, extraordinary things as far as the size of the organization. But they were some working class and average people, educated average educated people so they ain't about to break down too much knowledge and sophistication when they talk but hey, hey it is what it is ain't no Daniel Day Lewis about to appear in this show <laughs> although Braxton Braxton was there for you Braxton dropping some knowledge uh, with his daughter Miles Davis with that old dumbass sword I think that is like a James Bond villain type thing. I never in real life, although this was in Chicago, and, and I was never uh, no no big time person doing anything, but I never heard or seen a person with a sword walk around and putting it on people and stuff because somebody had been and shot you with that pulling that damn sword out so i don't know maybe maybe not i think that she looks like a character with the gold teeth and the glasses and the sword and all this and just i don't know i could be wrong maybe this person really did exist and and move like that um they definitely would have been unique <laughs> for sure Anyway, this is a good show. Uh, so far, so good. I'm interested to see, you know, what happens with Bruiser and his son. I don't know if that really did happen. Um, and if anybody in the comments or watching, if you know anything about that, let me know in the comments. Did Brian or one of the detectives searching for him, his son, go through? I think this Brian character could be all made up, but. I don't know. I didn't look into that. Uh, but if his son did go to jail and all this, I wonder what happened to that case. I'm interested. Because I don't know what, what is his lawyer going to say. This dude shot another kid in cold blood. It ain't like they about to get him out of jail and he go back to public school or something. So I don't know how or what is going to happen for him. And uh, I'd be interested to see how the Bruiser allies gonna help. Bruiser got some allies. The Bruiser. <laughs> hey, hey, Bruiser. Bruiser ain't shit. That's what he should have said. The Bruiser ain't shit, Dad. Okay? The Bruiser ain't shit, Dad. <laughs> you see my eye? I'm the Bruised and Bruiser. Corey Washington. It was cartoonish when she shot that lady during sex. That was that was see that character is messing up this season in a way to me. It's like I said earlier, Miles Davis seemed like a James Bond villain to me. Just don't seem right. I almost don't like old James Bond movies no more, to be honest with you. If it wasn't for the nostalgia. Even the Pierce Brosnan James Bond movies are corny. They've been playing them a lot recently. It's like these people are so over the top. You'd be like, man, how are they making a satellite reflecting the sun in Antarctica? And then they know military action. This I don't. It just gets so much going on. Holly Berry and the thing and the sun. <laughs> James Bond can jump out of a damn hang out of a car and what parachute in antarctica and ski 
on the top of the car. Oh my God! This one guy in the, in the James Bond movie with Holly Berry, so uh, explosion happened with the Asian dude, and where there's some diamonds, and so the diamonds went into his face. So for the rest of the movie, he walk around with the diamonds in his face. Like, why you didn't get them taken out? You know, it's a surgery for that, right? They do got tweezers. You know that, right? You just go walk around with diamonds in your face for the rest of your life, really? Like, that's just permanent. Like, you couldn't get that took out. So, <laughs> that's like a million dollars in your face. Boy, what you doing? Anyway, it just seems like it's not real. Now, the Daniel Craig, James Bond movies, although the last one where dude and stuff and the it started getting a little like that, but at first it wasn't. It seemed like real, real more realistic. And so I don't know. With this here, with Henrietta, I would like to know if this was a real person. If anybody ever come across whether this person existed or not, let me know in the comments because it definitely would help me <laughs> with believing in this character. This old sword wielding strap on having individual, it, it seems not plausible and realistic, but anyway, we will see. I'm getting ready to get up out of here, y'all. Call it a night. I appreciate everybody for supporting my channel, my work, for sticking with me through the ups and downs and uh yeah i've been worn out with moving and getting so much stuff done in these last few months but i still try to show up for work and perform on game day so i appreciate y'all with all the support and everybody you know sticking with me giving me a little time to heal and recover and things and I was ready last night though. I got I got a witness. It was bad out here. <laughs> anyway, I'm up out of here, y'all. Hey Jocelyn, much love. Appreciate y'all. I'm up out of here. I'm about to crash in this bed. I'm worn out. <laughs> but I will be back. The bruiser got a new show. Bruiser be back. When Sunday, 10 o'clock, Bruiser, B Dale, B Squared. Anyway, get up out of here. I'll be back Sunday at 10 o'clock, Lord willing. We talk a little bit more about this, and hopefully, I can get a little time to make a little video about Power Book 2 and the cancellation and things. All right, I'm up out of here, y'all. Bruise about to get some Z's. Bruise got to get some Z's. Yeah. Deuces. Y'all have a good weekend. I'm out.